Brilliant. So you're in Montreal then, um, yeah. which is where you live, and uh, I do. Yeah. yeah. So how, what's it like in Montreal these days? What's uh, what's happening post COVID, or are we still in the middle of a <laughs> COVID pandemic in Canada? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> it's like it's like it really it's it, it's uh, you know it's it's uh, I, it's a little sort of a frightening thing to talk about sometimes because yeah. as it it's a boring and very complex thing, but uh, being on tour, uh, I, like I did six weeks in the States, yeah, and I, I witnessed about five or seven different realities, and and then I came home to an eighth reality. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like like in LA, it was very like we're masks, social distancing, and then in uh, like in New Orleans or Atlanta. Like it, it, it didn't exist, and yeah. and I didn't get sick once, so I'm I was mm. really lucky. Um, and then back in Montreal, like people are not really going to shows quite yet. No. Younger people are. It's very fractured. Like it's hard to get a sense of, of like there's no it seems to be no common ground <laughs> depending no. on what city I'm in. You know. Here, over here, it's changing quite significantly. You know, There's a lot of gigs happening. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, people yeah. aren't really talking about it no. much, and uh, yeah, it feels a lot more open. Yeah, it's hard to even know what to say. <laughs> no, it's no, that's like okay. At the same time, I, I know. It's, know. I don't really even want to talk yeah. about it anymore. <laughs> sorry, yeah. sorry to bring it up. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I just find it. I, I find that I'm so lucky that like, uh, I mean, we're able to play music again and go out. Yeah. And so, it's such a, I find it a real pleasure because a lot of the times people who haven't had the chance to leave wherever they are, um, for better or worse, like they don't have, like it's so nice to see different people interacting differently with, yeah. with the same problem and, and realizing there's a lot of ways to yeah. skin the cat, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, obviously, you've done the American. You've had the American experience, so you've got used to the idea of being on the road and, and playing regularly again. But um, I, mm-hmm. I guess this will be your first time to Europe performing. Or, or have I got that uh, wrong? For a couple of years, or you mean ever? No, no, no. For since uh, you know March two thousand and twenty, oh, whenever yeah. it was. Here. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. Was like, oh, I totally went before. Um, but uh, no, no. This will be the first. Uh, yeah, this will be the first hop across the ocean. Yeah. 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 So, um, well, it's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the hope. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, pre- we're pretty excited. I mean, this is the first time I'm bringing um, the band. Uh, I've been just doing a lot of solo sets and a lot of like opening and a lot of headline solo um, over the years. Yeah. And I was like, well, as soon as we can actually sell enough tickets, and I can afford to bring the band. I'm going to bring them. But yeah. now we're bringing them. Great. And uh, they're excited. I'm excited. It's kind of like, you know, it just shows, I don't know, it's like a weird, <laughs> it's weird because before, um, back in 2020 in January, we were, um, we just sold out of, you know, before anything happened uh, in the shutdown world, uh, we'd sold out to Bush Hall and I was like flabbergasted, mm. which was like 800 tickets. And I thought, holy shit, like, this is amazing. And then it, they got canceled. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, ah, oh, shit. Um, but now it looks like uh, we're doing uh, Electric Brixton yeah. um, in London, which is 1,500. In so so it's really great to see, hear you've got a band with you. So can you tell me a bit about um, what you've got on with you? Personally speaking, it's, it's lovely to hear the songs sort of stripped back. And some of your songs are very very minimalistic. But, uh, but you know, studio recordings are a bit fuller, aren't they, some of them? And... Um, uh, I always enjoy that because I think it's just what I like. <laughs> yeah, um, no, exactly. Yeah, and you've got other people you can feed off as well. Can't you? It's, it's a proper band, isn't it? So it's good. Um, so the so the new release, um, which is basically a, uh, a collection of live recordings, isn't it, from nineteen uh, twenty 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 nineteen to twenty twenty one. Um, what, what was the what was the reasoning behind that? I was just like, I, w- I think we just canceled our third round of dates, you know, um, which is which is annoying. Uh, it, it's hard. It, it's it's hard to actually express the the the, the frustration because there's such a larger 
you know, it's like, well, okay, well, nobody died, so that's good, you know. And then, but you're also like, I, you know, another year of it, you know, I was working on other things, you know, I was like gardening, I was building things, like, <laughs> yeah. I was painting. I kind of just, like, I kept writing, but I kind of stopped being a musician for a couple of years. And it was, uh, so that, you know, had it gone, had there been no more shows for another few years, I don't know that I wouldn't have just stopped. You know, like, I don't know. Like, it's just weird. And so we had some recordings that came out, and I thought, uh, I did one thing. I did this James Corden uh, live, uh, it was via Zoom, <laughs> but we did a live session. And uh, and I thought it sounded great, and I and I hadn't recorded it at all. And I was like, oh, man, this sounds great. And I thought, man, this sounds like as good as a record. And it's just a live recording. And then uh, I, we had some recordings that I'd for, kind of forgotten about. And then I thought, well, oh, crap, like, this, this sounds good to me. And, like, I can't be touring right now, and I want to be touring. And, like, all I want to do is, like, I just want to connect. Again, yeah. I missed my band, and I missed playing with people in a room and playing with two people in a room or 500 people in a room. And uh, so it was kind of like what I did in order to like just feel connected to that part of me that I'd kind of buried in the garden. And so it's kind of just, it was more that. And so now looking back, I don't, I, I'm like, oh yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we put it out, but it was, it's kind of this, yeah, it was also just something to like, you know, kind of let people know where we were at in terms of sound because it's a little bit more electric, a little bit more, it's a bit more energy in it. Uh, most most of the songs on that album, if not all of them, have seen the light of day as uh, studio recordings, haven't they? Uh, how, how does how does it how does it work for you in terms of writing? Do, do you just sit down and things start coming out, or do you write lyrics? first or, or uh, just come up with a melody or, or how does it work oh uh, yeah I fi- I've, yeah i figured it out um i have no idea and i don't know i, <laughs> okay. I, 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 I don't know That's i have no enough. idea yeah yeah i don't know you i don't, don't know what i'm doing yeah and sometimes there's not i don't know i actually don't know i i used to try to have an answer and it would like i'd convince myself that i did and the next day i'd go do that I'd be like yeah well, this is how i would do it no not how it's done. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Fair I'm enough. I'm surprised there's any songs at all. Yeah. You know? Obviously, in terms of the UK, you, you seem to have really struck a chord here because um, obviously you're, you know, from from Canada and you were. I, I was reading that you you were studying philosophy, and then you decided that you were going to pursue a musical career, um, and then I guess that was a. Um, uh, a, a sort of a, a leaf in the dark is it was it was it I mean did it feel like it was a something you just had to do or were you... I, I always I always played music and I actually did I studied because I was like what I noticed was that when I was like 16 I'd write a, I wrote all the time yeah and about every six months I'd go back and look at listen to my songs and I'd be like really disgusted I'd be like this is so bad you know and they were bad and I thought well, if I go study for a few years, I'll, like I will learn something before I spend my entire life making music, and maybe I'll be able to delay some of these awful songs coming out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but yeah, it was a little bit like let's do something uh, else. I, I was writing the whole time and, and, and recording music when I was at school. I, yeah, kind of. It was kind of this. I don't. I don't know. I just felt like I wanted to. My brother was really into philosophy, and I was very competitive with him. And so I was like, I just, uh, yeah, I just wanted to, I just wanted to have something in my brain that wasn't Bob Dylan lyrics. Yeah. Uh, before I spent the rest of my life doing doing that, I think. But it wasn't much of a leap. I just really wanted to do it. You know. I was just going to ask you about philosophy. If there was any particular areas he liked, I'm, I I ask because my wife is a, she teaches philosophy and she's she's just immersed in it. She loves. I haven't picked up anything in the last in the last year. I kind of I kind of moved into uh, kind of like hard science, <laughs> right? <laughs> like I really like recently, but um, what does that I, mean? Uh, like, are you, well, are you interested well, in the I, hard I, I, the hard question of consciousness or something like that? Or <laughs> oh, that, oh no, that during yeah during the, the first year when everything was kind of shut down, I, like I was like, I guess this is it. I kind of took my retirement year. Yeah. And I, uh, yeah, I got got really into like reading about like chemistry and physics and right. and yeah. uh, like quantum physics and all that stuff, and and trying to find the bridge 
of all these things. And I, I, I know a lot more, but I also know a lot less. That's for yeah. sure. <laughs> but, um, but for philosophy, I'm kind of a big fan of the three dudes that didn't have answers, that only asked questions. Yeah. So that would be, uh, for me anyways, that would be Nietzsche and, uh, or however you want to say it, Nietzsche. Yeah. And, uh, and Wittgenstein. Okay. Uh, but like the late Wittgenstein. Yeah. Um, but more like the poetic side of him where he's like, you know, my life has no limit. Like my field of vision yeah. has no end. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like this, is, this guy's like a total genius. Well, that, and like Socrates. And yeah. Plato, I guess. Um, I was into Sartre, but you know, I hate the, I hate the French philosophers now. I just think they're just completely just dead wrong and yeah. immoral bastards. Yeah. So, I <laughs> yeah. think, like for real, like I just like turned on, you know, that teenage self loves that Sartre, and now I think here's a fucking guy that just like wrote anything to excuse his like terrible behavior and subjugation of Simone, and like you know, I just like I was like, who is this complete narcissist with like you know, and like kissing up to the Soviet Union, and like I was just like, oh, it's just awful. Anyhow, <laughs> no, it's, yeah, it's cool. Like, really, Nietzsche has never, never yeah been too far, you know. Yeah, I've been yeah. trying to get into a lot of that stuff recently, and existentialism has always been of interest to me. But I was trying to get something. I was trying to get my head around. Um, maybe you could just give me a quick pointer. Um, Maurice Merleau Ponty, I think his name is. After I put someone on a pedestal, I dig a ditch. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Sartre, like I just. Like, I used to think he was so great. I read being nothingness and yeah. all, all it was like this. And I'm like, but no, really, the person, yeah, because Mala Ponty was, like, really the king of Husserl. Like, uh, yeah. you know about Husserl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, he's, like, he's actually the father of, you know, of, of um, not existentialism, but of um, uh, phenomenology. Yeah. And it's just so absolutely... Husserl, like, I mean, he's a bit dry. He's very dry. It was, he's very boring. But his concepts are yeah. basically he's like, let's do the Cartesian thing. Let's go with the complete reduction. I perceive, therefore, I am. Yeah. How do I perceive? And it, it kind of goes into Buddhist thinking. And then Nola Ponty really, it's almost, it's beautiful. Like, right. he likes, he, and it's like kind of crosses over into science, too, right? Where he's like, studying the phantom limb phenomenon and all that. And right, yeah. It's very, like, uh, it's just that, yeah, it, it, there's a compassionate man, <laughs> you know, with a lot of, yeah. Yeah, yeah so not all, all French is bad. No. <laughs> Does it inform your songwriting, do you think, that kind of philosophical background or, or that kind of interest in um, philosophical ideas? I know it's a terrible question, but I thought you know, I'd just throw it, it throw it out there and see what... I don't know. I, I mean, you know, everything... I don't know how... Yeah, everything kind of just seeps in and, and, and yeah. you know, it, it's, a, it's a little different. That's what I mean, like, that's, uh, that's why I'm so into, like, Nietzsche and Wittgenstein and, and Socrates for, like, that's kind of like my... I try to, like, who who, is, who hasn't really been wrong that yeah. much? Yeah. And it's those, there's these people that just ask questions and, you know, there's a lot... But they're just curious, you know, and, and they're open-minded, and they and they're looking. They are; those are all poets, you know. And Plato is a poet, and so it's just kind of like, you know, and they they praise poetry, and so, and Wittgenstein, like, um, it's just fascinating. Like he grew up in a house where his brother was a like concert pianist, and even lost, and his brother lost a hand, and he still kept playing piano, like, and was a successful pianist. And uh, Wittgenstein was really good at the clarinet and could whistle symphonies. And right. if he weren't a philosophy professor or later a teacher, he would have been, they say, uh, he would, or he said that he could have, would have been a like a composer, um, a conductor of an yeah. orchestra. And so it's just like it's like these are the people that I gravitate to. They're all musicians anyway, you know. So it's kind of yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay, I d just finally, I just wanted to just ask you about long, long, uh, long blue light, um, which was a song that you actually released um, after your last album, last yeah. new album, and um, and that was a, a, a lovely, beautiful song which I enjoyed playing. Uh, and I think, and there's a version, there's a live version of that, isn't there, on the on the new record as well? 
Mm-hmm. Um, will you be playing that one? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on yeah, we've been playing. It. Yeah, totally. We, yeah. we added it in, and it's been it's been nice to have. It was funny to have a song that the band didn't know. Yeah. Um, because that, that was like a real session recording where I, I had a drummer. Like that was a, like it was a leftover song from from the recording sessions that I that I hadn't finished, and so I didn't put it on the record. Yeah. And I also thought lyrically, it like I didn't understand what it was about, mm-hmm. and because uh, I just don't, I don't know where you know you write it and you don't know where <laughs> yeah. where anything's from, and uh, and then during the uh, that time off, it came back to me, and I was like, oh, this is like this is the, this is the song, this is a song about death, yeah. you know, it's a song about death, right now. and uh, yeah. So then I showed it to the band. We I think we got it pretty tight now. It's just so, so funny to have the. Like I feel like I'm covering myself when I play it because I'm like because it was the I hadn't I'd only heard it in, as a recorded song for a few years. Yeah. And <laughs> mm-hmm. Good stuff. Yeah, it's, it's been nice playing that one. Well, thank you very thank you very much for taking the time, and um, I hope you enjoy the, the flight over and and, uh, and the and the dates in in Britain. And um, yeah. oh man, we're so excited. We're just like beyond uh, the whole band's beyond excited. Yeah. I told them that the. The U.S. tour was a rehearsal for our yeah. our, our European dates. Yeah. <laughs> We're just so excited. Yeah, yeah it's going to be amazing. And, um, yeah, we always feel like kind of doing things for the first time in some ways, isn't it? After, the, oh, after such a really, long time. Yeah, yeah, and it, I know you're, you're not in London, but um, our biggest show, I was just talking to my, the guy who runs my label, and he was like, isn't London the biggest show you've ever played in right. your life? And yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> I guess it is. Thanks. Yeah. I wasn't nervous, but now yeah. I am. Yeah. So it's, it's, I don't know. It's pretty. It's pretty wild. Like bigger than, uh, bigger than Canada. Yeah. You know, bigger than in the states. So it's pretty. I feel pretty lucky, and ex- I'm, it's always really. You know, the audience is always so responsive yeah. in the UK. 